dear students welcome to the class on blood grouping the importance of today's class is given in the enclosure it can be a theory or a practical question and you can get a good number of iowa verse in the hematology section as well as in the practicals on blood grouping further to it mcqs or not spat i hope you people are able to enjoy the background behind me and find out what it denotes welcome to blood grouping there is something i wouldn't call it a monolesa smile but then there is a great depth of expectation from this child donate blood give a smile to everyone wonderful saying i hope we shall be following it in our lives just go through the two columns of topics that have been given on the screen and i hope you people would be able to answer at least 50% of them if not attend this class very carefully i would like you students to kindly have a clear concept of the blood bank it has got a minimum of seven sections or compartments and the licensing authority is not the national medical commission or the medical council of india it is a different body namely the pharmaceutical sciences and after the reception of the donor the segregation the preparation of the various samples doing the screen testing and finally obtaining the orders from the donors or the ward or the theater there is a distribution that is going on in the meantime there is a storage space at the recommended temperature for all the various samples i would also want you people to kindly notice that when i say transfusion it is not blood alone gone are the days when the whole blood is being transfused nowadays component therapy is what that is being recommended and the importance of it you shall be knowing towards the end of this class which include packed red cells platelet rich plasma platelet poor plasma cryoprecipitate as well as the components etc the very blood bank or blood grouping is based on immunological principles designed by landsteiner the father of blood banking and he has stated that if antigens are present on the surface of the red cells then the corresponding antibodies will not be present in the same patient's plasma so if you have to have an antigen and antibody then all your blood will become clumped there are two terms that we should understand one is called a universal donor he can donate blood to anybody he belongs to group o and he has got neither the a antigens nor the b antigens another one is the universal recipient the exact opposite of o it belongs to group ab there is no anti a or anti b antibodies and it cannot be lysed by any transfused cell therefore this patient can receive blood from anyone a universal recipient universal donor but then this should be taken at the most extreme of emergency situations this is the fundamental principle that you people should know and explain so this is 
the various blood group over here a b a b and o so there are some antibodies which are present on the surface rather the antigens which are present on the surface so there is the a antigen then the b a b and no antigens accordingly you find that in this patient there will be anti b antibodies in this there will be anti a antibodies in the ab group no antibodies are present whereas in the o group both anti a and anti b antibodies are present whereas the antigen will be a antigen in a group b antigen in b group both a and b antigen in ab no antigens in o group and here are the various groups with which this particular blood will be compatible therefore i given the compatibility in a box also i would like you people to kindly memorize this this basic concept you people should very clearly have do not read it at the last minute you can lead to a transfusion reaction in the examination there is another group called the rh blood group it is based on the rh factor again found on the rbc as spikes there is an entity called as rh positive another one without the rh factor is called rh negative it is found in the erythrocytes of the rhesus monkey hence the term rh blood group this is of paramount importance in fact the rh incompatibility is more notorious and dangerous than the abo incompatibility both of them will lead to hemolysis but you find that the rh incompatibility can devastate lives this is a very important question that i usually ask the students repeatedly and i get the wrong answer what are the different blood groups and immediately the student answers slide tube method etc these are the blood grouping methods the blood grouping methods are either the slide otherwise called the tile method in the examination we will be given the tile tube method microplate method gel method and there is another method called the solid method so these are the various methods of grouping the blood whereas there are different types of blood groups as explained earlier abo group is one and rh is one both of this i have made them bold so that it is very clear these are the two important groups well there are other systems such as kale mns lui and duffy then why are we ignoring that because they are all weak antigens and not much of clinical significance whereas this can be life threatening and life saving this can be ignored as such so whenever you are asked about the blood groups you will have to mention the other blood groups but most important will be the abo and the rh and these are the different methods by which the blood grouping can be done and if you people make a mistake between these two it is as so you are not able to identify the difference between these i hope you take this matter very seriously the slide method as i had mentioned earlier in the examination you people are doing this but you are given a white tile or a plate on which you do the blood grouping hence we call it a tile method it is very same as the slide method and look at what is happening there is a slide over here in which two circles have been drawn and another slide has been taken with a single circle in each of these circles the anti sera is placed anti b anti sera anti a and anti d anti sera after this a drop of blood is added generally we should take care not generally specifically we should take care that the pipette does not touch 
the antiserum because once it is contaminated and i put it inside the blood bottle again the entire thing will be contaminated with an antisera giving rise to false positive reactions and the entire practical exam will be ms so generally what we do is we place it by the side and then mix them by means of either a sterile stick or sometimes if you are experienced we use the corners of a slide and look at this one the slide should be properly labeled and the antisera should be added and the results recorded immediately before and whenever there is a hemolysis it is interpreted as positive sometimes what happened there will be about 30 to 32 students in a practical examination and by the time an examiner goes to the 10th student his blood sample would have got dry therefore you will not be able to make out anything everything appears granular in order to make it clear we can add saline or distilled water and again make it into a form of a solution of granules and present it to the examiner and there is another question also why are we using the slide method what is the advantage of the slide method over the tile method in case i am not very sure about the clumping i can view it under the microscope so even minute clumping can be made out so this is the same thing that has been explained in this one in blood group a there is a antigen a and when antibody a is added there is clumping whereas when antibody b is added there is no clumping so also about the other things whereas in blood group o there is no antigen and there is no antigen to the b also so kindly go through this entire one it will make us understand clumping means it is positive for the specific blood group this is the slide method otherwise called the tile method in fact i used to tap on the tile and ask the student what is this they will invariably say slide again and this is something that the junior students can draw in their record and the same thing has been explained very clearly if this is going to be a presentation in the examination definitely it will be impressive what is the group over here and what is the antiserum that is being added whether there is any agglutination or not see when you add anti a there is agglutination hence it is entered as agglutination anti b there is no agglutination it is mentioned as nil against rhesus there is agglutination it is mentioned as rh positive so this is the way you people should present in the examination as well as draw in your records and take care the reading must be taken as early as possible whenever i say the slide method there is another method called the tube method the tube method is more accurate more sensitive and it is practiced in the blood bank so it is here there is antiserum that is first dropped in and then there will be the red cells you can go through the steps over here this will be explained in the subsequent slides for the time being we shall rest assured that there are two methods one is the slide method that we are following second one is the tube method and these are the steps let us see whether we can follow it so this is the antiserum we have been talking about and the patient's blood is taken in fact it is washed with saline and then a diluted sample is prepared so it contains only the rbcs and these are the antiserum a b and rh so it is over here and what happens is so look at the distance from which they are adding the blood the blood is being added and then it is centrifuged and what will happen is if there is going to be a clumping it will become obvious and it is viewed against an ultraviolet light so even if i have got any doubt it can be made out very clearly and they say that even the agglutination could be graded by this method so i hope you people understand the value of it we are not going to play with the lives of the patients the third method will be the gel card method 
here in the next picture also i'll be showing it so don't get worried the gel is held in micro tubules and each tubule will contain what is called as a cefadex gel and there will be the group specific anti sera or it can be used for the plumes test as well and this is the gel pack that is present for the agglutination so what happens if the antigen is present agglutination occurs if there is no antigen no agglutination occurs if you people can write this much it is more than enough and if you are not able to understand find this so this is the suspension of the patient's blood it is containing the rbcs and when you want to draw a diagram draw this alone in the examination because it is easy easily reproducible and there is a anti serum there are the antibodies over here and the anti serum in the matrix so once it is there there will be a clumping and the reaction could be graded as mild to moderate or it can be negative itself when there is going to be a clumping i am able to see the clumping of the rbcs otherwise they settle down to the bottom this is the gel card method used for microtyping of the blood groups extremely important extremely sensitive there is another method called the microplate method it is based on the elisa principle i hope you people have seen an elisa apparatus it will be having multiple wells each of which is coated with the anti sera and the patient cells are being added as a source of the antigen it is incubated centrifuge and finally the reading is taken i know that it is difficult for you people to understand now but see this picture so these are multiple wells in which i find that the anti sera is being added and the patient's blood is being added and it is the whole thing can be centrifuged so you find that multiple samples could be run only thing they should be labeled very carefully and entered into the specific well not otherwise the elisa itself is a university question for you in microbiology and there are many applications including the hiv hepatitis etc as i told you earlier whenever you donate blood you don't save a single life you save three lives what do i mean by it earlier there is a impression that blood is transfused as a whole so this is the blood bag so you collect the blood from the donor and after some time it is gently centrifuge there are couple of other bags which are again attached to it and after centrifugation you find that by gentle compression the rbc is really settling to the bottom and by gentle compression you find that the plasma and the platelets are being sent to the next one and after some centrifugation again even the platelets settle down when there is going to be compression of the bag there is a plasma alone that is being sent to the third bag so from a single donation i am getting packed red cells as well as platelet rich plasma and platelet poor plasma platelet poor plasma will be rich in many of the clotting factors platelets we all know it is rich in platelets itself and it is needed in bleeding disorders and packed red cells is nowadays given for any patient with severe anemia and not whole blood so this particular one i want you people to explain in some colleges the blood bag itself can be kept for viva and this is what we get when we centrifuge the sample the rbc is settled down to the bottom and there is a plasma at the top plasma means it is serum plus fibrin the buffy coat is in the middle buffy coat means leukocytes and platelets again this particular one is of extreme importance what are the different methods of doing the blood grouping what are the advantages of each what are the disadvantages of each there is no other go but to memorize so this is done slight test it can be done for a preliminary typing when you are going for screening for your aadhar card whatever it is or in a camp this can be done disadvantages it is less sensitive sometimes there can be false positive results tube method is a gold standard method but there is increased training that is required and the grading which i mentioned earlier can be subjective 
subjective means it varies from person to person from technician to technician that can be not a disadvantage but it should be used with caution micro plate multiple samples could be run for abo grouping for rh typing the gel method i have demonstrated earlier you find that a very small sample size is required it is stable it is standardized and there is a speed all yes please remember the yes and the disadvantages there is a sensitive pipetting that is required special equipment and hemolyzed samples can sometimes give rise to false positive results so these are the various methods tomorrow definitely in the examination the examiner will ask you what are the different methods of doing the blood grouping you should mention the slide method or the tile method tube method microplate method gel phase method or the solid gel phase method i don't think this word is required but anyway for completion what are the screening tests okay even if a relative is very close i don't think he can immediately give blood there have been very tragic situations where a brother has given blood to his counterpart but then he has transmitted an incurable disease by the blood that has been given so it is extremely important one is obviously the blood group that has to be done both in the donor as well as in the recipient the rh typing it has to be done screening of the donor screening of the donor means it can be the weight it can be the health status whether he himself is anemic or normal diabetic he has had a history of jaundice what is the age of the patient less than 18 years more than say about 55 years you people are not supposed to give blood and anybody who is suffering from a major illness such as a cardiac failure hypertension etc should not if you have undergone a major surgery in the recent past you are not eligible so these are the things and past history of donation there is an entity called as commercial donors they donate blood for the sake of money take the money and go to a liquor shop for alcohol these are commercial donors so we should find out when they had given if it is going to be within a period of 6 months it is not recommended past history of transmission whether he is a professional donor alcoholism drug intake tuberculosis all these patients should not give blood and these are all the various screening tests that should be done please memorize it for example hepatitis obviously we cannot give home test should be done malaria hiv then rt pcr nowadays because of the covid also so this is the blood bag i have been talking about have a very clear concept because you are all going to become surgeons cardiothoracic surgeons or even transplant surgeons and you will be requiring blood so in any blood bag you find that the first and foremost will be the blood group whether it is rh positive or rh negative that we usually even write and then what is a donor donor means he will be having a specific number so that should be over there so what is the anticoagulant that is added acid citrate dextrose and the value of it i shall be giving there should be a label carrying all these details what is the date of donation what is the date of expiry what is the blood group id number reference number and these should be entered in the register also and similarly the details of the donor and any recipient details because later on when we are screening we find that there is something wrong we find that patient to be hepatitis positive we can give an alarm so that he does not donate blood elsewhere acid citrate dextrose is the anticoagulant that is used these basic details you people should know is in fact they should have been one of the first slides one pint of blood is the one unit of blood that we usually talk about it is 473.18 ml so this is the unit one pint the normal body of ours contains 8 to 10 pints of blood the collecting needle the needle over here is a 16 gauge needle and the anticoagulant as it said dex is 63 to 70 ml so this is the ratio that should be maintained there is another development on this that is called citrate phosphate dextrose adenine so this is the anticoagulant that can be used 
The capacity of the bag is about 600 ml, but the volume contained is usually a little more than 500 ml. And there are various bags. There can be a simple single blood bag, double blood bag, triple bag, or even a quadruple bag. Why? Because the multiple components can be separated and given to multiple patients for benefit. Now, what are we seeing on the screen? This is a pilot bottle. What is a pilot bottle? It is a simple screw cap bottle in which the donor's blood is being collected. Along with the blood bag, you find the same sample is collected in this tube also. It is given the same number as in the blood bag and the register. Can you tell me why it is being done? Not uncommonly, we find some kind of a transfusion reaction once the blood is started being transfused. And we do not know whether it is a wrong blood group or whether there is some mistake in it. So we rush to this pilot bottle, take it, again recheck the blood. Also, we'll be having the patient's blood with which we do a cross-matching and find out that it is compatible. So this is the importance of the pilot bottle. Without it, we will be landing ourselves and the patient in a catastrophe. And there are two methods of typing. One is called a forward typing. Another is called a reverse typing. Please remember this. These diagrams I had picked up from the net with great difficulty. But then look at this one. What we normally do, that is called the forward typing. The patient's RBCs and the anti-sera or anti-A reagent. Patient's RBCs and the anti-B reagent. Patient's RBCs and the anti-D reagent. So this is what we usually do and we find out whether there is any clumping. Reverse typing is done when we take the patient's plasma and a known blood group. So patient's plasma and a known blood group. These are being tested for A1 cells and B cells. Why do we do it? Whenever there is any doubt in the grouping. Or two, when the cross-matching, there is any doubt. The antigen that is expressed on the surface is quite weak. And whenever, as I had mentioned, there is transfusion reaction. So this is of extreme importance. We should at least know what is a forward typing, what is a reverse typing. Not very difficult, it has been very simply explained. Spend your time, learn it. And normally we are collecting the whole blood and doing a grouping. But instead, what people say is a red cell suspension will be ideal. What do I mean by the word red cell suspension? You collect 5 ml of blood in a plain, plain vial and it can be either with ACD or it can be clotted. The clotted sample is better because it contains RPCs along with fibrin. The blood is taken into another tube and we add sodium chloride, centrifuged. The supernatant is poured off and the cells are again rewashed. And we add the saline to a specific ratio. This is called a cell suspension. Now all the unwanted antigen, etc., will be washed off. No impurities will be present and it will lead to a perfect grouping and cross-match. What are the complications and transfusion reactions? This is a repeatedly asked questions. To my knowledge, it has been asked about 600 to 700 times in the various universities. And students find difficulty in answering it. As I always say, when in doubt, divide. So, the complications can be divided into immune complications and non-immune complications. Also, they can be divided into, look at these, I've given it a bold shade because they are immediate. They can be divided into immediate complications and delayed complications. So immunological, non-immunological, immediate and delayed. And what are all the various immunological reactions? It can be ABO incompatibility, RH incompatibility, because of any impurities, there can be release of histamine or anaphylatoxins. Delayed transmission reaction can occur after the sensitization of the red cell antigens. 
And whenever there is a hemolysis, there can be jaundice. And remember, these two themselves can lead to hemolysis and jaundice. So these are all the immunological complications. The non-immunological complications include febrile reactions or cytokines. Patient develops a rigor, you discontinue the transfusion, after some time he is normal. This is extremely important. I like somebody very much, the patient is a VIP, and if I treat him well, I'll be getting a promotion in my job. Therefore, I give multiple loads of transfusion, and the VIP goes into cardiac failure and dies, and I am to give an explanation. Cardiac overload, circulatory overload. This can also result in pulmonary edema. Bacterial contamination. The normal infection that is spread by the blood is staphylococcal or streptococcal. After some time, you look at the blood bag, there will be some yellowish exudate that is present, present on the top. That is because of the organism. Otherwise, hepatitis, B or C, sometimes A also. Malaria, extremely important. Calciferum. The patient can go in for cerebral malaria and die. HIV, we all know this, legendary HIV. So these are all the various infections. Strangely, you find that there can be an electrolyte imbalance also. When there is a repeated transfusion, it mismanages or creates an imbalance of sodium, potassium, etc. And an electrolyte imbalance is also being created. So these are all the reactions I have explained them very clearly in my class on rats, in my book, one page. So I would like you people to go to these sources for the topics on complications of blood transfusion, erythroblastosis, fetalis, Coombs test, and whatnot. I would like you people to rehearse and explain this by yourself before going to the examination. So this is again a beautiful diagram. Such things you people should draw in your records. Bombay blood group. This question has been asked by almost all the examiners in all the centers. It is otherwise called as HH group. It was first discovered in Bombay and hence the name Bombay blood group. Extremely rare and this is the percentage of occurrence. Discovered by Dr. Bande and others. And the problem here is a patient with a Bombay blood group can receive blood only from a donor with a Bombay blood group. Here, you find that there is the O group and it contains H only. And normally we find that there is no anti-A, anti-B or anti-AB. That is why this person can be a universal donor. Whereas in a case of a Bombay blood group, even this is absent. As a result of which, you find that only the anti-H group patient can be giving it. Therefore, it will be leading to a clumping. This is extremely important, the Bombay blood group. And look at this gentleman. He has traveled all the way from one city to another to save another patient in Velour. A Bombay blood group. And donate blood, you can save three lives. Why did I say that? It can be because of your packed red cells, because of your platelet-rich plasma, because of your platelet-poor plasma. And it is tragic that it is a thalassemic patient. You find that these patients can go in for a recurrent anemia, as a result of which they will be requiring transfusions. Also patients with hemophilia, you find that that is still worse. They will be lacking the clotting factor. They will be needing plasma from multiple donors, we call it a pooled plasma. When this is being given, they can land up with HIV. And a nice saying over here, no one has ever become poor by giving. So by donating blood, we don't see anything. And this is a nice one over here. I didn't notice it earlier, but only now. Sharing the umbrella with a dog. The importance of smaller steps. Dear students, do not be perturbed. I would advise you people to master each and every exercise. Blood grouping, let it be so. Hemoglobin, so be it. Peripheral smear, so also. 
and i find that a person who is climbing multiple small steps is able to ascend the ladder rather than one who tries to make huge jumps mercy